The Cube presents Ignite 22. Brought to you by Palo Alto Networks. Hey everyone, welcome back to theCUBE's live coverage of Palo Alto Network's Ignite 22 from the MGM Grand in beautiful Las Vegas. I am Lisa Martin here with Dave Vellante. Dave, we just had a great conversation. First of all, we got to hear the keynote, most, most of it. We also just had a great conversation with the CEO and chairman of Palo Alto Networks, Nikesh Arora. You know, this is a company that was founded back in 2005. He's been there four years. A lot has happened, a lot of growth, a lot of momentum in his tenure, you were saying in your breaking analysis that they are on track to nearly double revenues from FY20 to 23. Lots yep. of momentum in this, in this cloud security company. Yeah, I'd never met him before. I mean, I've been following a little bit. It's interesting, he, he came in as a sort of a, a security outsider. You know, he joked today, that he, the, the host, I forget the guy's name on stage, what was his name, the, uh, Hassan. Hassan, he said, he's the only guy in the room who knows less about security than I do. Um, because it, it, you know, normally this is a, uh, an industry that's steeped in deep expertise. You know, he came in and I think is, you know, given a good compliment to the hardcore, you know, techies at Palo Alto Network. The company, it's it's really interesting. The company started out building their own data centers. They called it, you know, now they call look back and call it cloud, but it was their own data centers, kind of like Salesforce did, kind of like ServiceNow, because at the time you really couldn't do it in the public cloud. To come up a public cloud was, you know, a little too you know, unknown. And so they needed that type of control, but Palo Alto's been an amazing story since 2020. We wrote about this during the pandemic. So they, what they did is they began to pivot to the, the true cloud native public cloud, which is kind of immature still. You know, they don't tell you that, but it's kind of still a little bit immature, but it's working. And when they were pivoting, it was around the same time at Fortinet, who's a, a competitor there, it's like, they call them a poor man's Palo Alto, and they, Fortinet probably hates that, but it's kind of true. It's like a value play on, on a comprehensive platform, and you know Fortinet a little bit. And so, but what was happening is Fortinet was executing on its cloud strategy better than Palo Alto, and there was a real divergence in the valuations of these stocks, and we said at the time, we felt like Palo Alto being the gold standard would get through it, and they did. And what's happened is interesting, I wrote about this two weeks ago, if you go back to the pandemic, peak of the pandemic, or just you know, before, the peak you know, kind of in that tech bubble, if you will, Splunk's down 44% from that peak, Okta's down, down, sorry, not down 44%, 44% of the peak. Okta's 22% of their peak. CrowdStrike, 41%, Zscaler, 36%. Fortinet, 71%, not so bad. Palo Alto's maintained 93% of its peak value. All right, so it, 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 it's a combination of two things. One is, they didn't run up as much during the pandemic, and they're executing through their cloud strategy and that's provided a sort of softer landing. And I think it's going to be interesting to see where they go from here. And you know, you heard Nikesh, we're going to double and then double again. So that's 7 billion, 14 billion, you know, heading to 30 billion. Yeah, yeah. He also talked about one of the things that he's done in his tenure here as really a workforce transformation. That we, and we talk all the time, it's not just technology and processes, it's people. They've also seemed to have done a pretty good job from a cultural transformation perspective, which is benefiting their customers. And they're also growing, the ecosystem, we talked a little bit about the ecosystem with Nikesh. Uh, we've got Google Cloud on, we've got AWS on the program today alone, talking about the partnerships. The ecosystem is expanding as well. Have you, uh, have you ever met Nir Zook? I have not, not yet. Founder and CTO? I haven't, uh, we've never been on theCUBE. He was supposed to come on one day down in New York City. Stu and I were going to interview him and he, he cut out of the conference early so we didn't interview him. But he's a very opinionated dude and you're going to see, he's basically going to come on, and, I mean I hope he is opinion, as opinionated on theCUBE, but he'll talk about how the industry has screwed it up. And Nikesh sort of talked about that. It's a shiny new toy strategy. Oh, there's another one, there's another one. It's the best in that category. Okay, let's get it. And that's how we've gotten to this point. I always use that Optive graphic, which shows the taxonomy and shows hundreds and hundreds of suppliers in the industry. And again, it's, it's true. Customers have 20, 30, sometimes 40 different tool sets. And so now, it's going to be interesting to see. So my, my, I guess my point is it, it starts at the top. The founder is, He's, a, he's an outspoken, smart, you know, tough Israeli who's like, we're going to take this on. Yeah. You, know, we're not, you know, we're not afraid to, to, to be ambitious. Um, and so, uh, so to your point about people and the culture, it starts there. Absolutely. You know, one of the things that, that you've written about in your breaking analysis 
uh, over the weekend, Nikesh talked about it, they want to be the consolidator. You see this as they're building out the security super cloud. Talk to me about that. What do you think, what is a security super cloud in your opinion? Yeah, so, so on, let me start with the consolidator. So Palo Alto obviously is executing on that strategy. CrowdStrike as well wants to be a consolidator. I would say Zscaler wants to be a consolidator. I would say that, that, that Microsoft wants to be a consolidator. So does Cisco. So they're all coming at it from different angles. Cisco coming at it from network security, which is Palo Alto's wheelhouse with their next gen firewalls, network security. Um, what, what Palo Alto did was interesting was they started out with you know, kind of a hardware-based firewall, but they didn't try to shove everything into it. They put the other function in their, their cloud. Zscaler, Zscaler's the one running around saying you don't need firewalls anymore, just run everything through our, you know, our cloud, our security cloud. I would think that as Zscaler expands its, its TAM, it's going gonna, it's gonna, to you know, start to acquire and do similar types of things. We'll see how that integrates. CrowdStrike is clearly executing on a similar portfolio strategy, you know, but they're coming at it from endpoint, okay? And they have to partner for, for network security. Uh, Cisco, you know, it's just big and you know, legacy, and, but they've done a really good job of acquiring and using services to hide some of that complexity. Uh, Microsoft is, uh, you know, they probably hate me saying this, but it's the just good enough strategy. And that may have hurt CrowdStrike last quarter because the SMB was a soft, we'll see. Um, but to specifically answer your question, the opportunity I, we think is to build the security super cloud. What does that mean? That means to have a common security platform across all clouds. So irrespective of whether you're running an Amazon, whether you're running on-prem, Google, or Azure, the security policies and the edicts and the way you secure your enterprise look the same. There's a, there's a PaaS layer, super PaaS layer for developers so that, that the developers can secure their code in a common framework across clouds. So, so that essentially, you know, Nikesh sort of balked at it, said no, 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 we're not, we don't, we're not really building a super cloud. Um, but essentially, they kind of are headed in that direction, I think, although what I don't know, like CrowdStrike and, and Microsoft are big competitors. Um, he mentioned AWS and Google. Right. We run on AWS, Google, and in their own data centers. It, that sounds like they don't currently run on Microsoft, because Microsoft is much more competitive with the security ecosystem. They got identity, so they compete with Okta. They got Endpoint, so they compete with with CrowdStrike right. and Palo Alto. So they're, Microsoft's at war with everybody. So can you build a super cloud on top of the clouds, the hyperscalers, and not do Microsoft? I would say no. Right. You need, you need but there's nothing stopping Palo Alto from running in the Microsoft cloud. Right. Um, I don't know if that's a strategy. We should ask them. Yeah. They've done a great job in, in our last few minutes of really expanding their TAM in the last few years, particularly under Nikesh's uh, leadership. What are some of the things that you heard this morning that you think really they've done a great job of expanding that TAM? He talked a little bit about, I didn't write the number down, but he talked a little bit about the, the market opportunity there. What do you see them doing as, as being best of, best of breed for organizations that have 30 to 50 tools and need to consolidate that? Well, the, the market opportunity is enormous. Is. I mean, we're talking about yeah, you know, well north of $100 billion. I mean, 150, 180, depending on whose numerator you use, Gartner, IDC, you know, Dave's, whatever, it's big. Okay, and they've got, you know, okay, they're headed towards 7 billion out of 180 billion. You know, whatever, again, number you use. So they started with network security, they put the, most of the network function in the cloud, they moved to endpoint, they, you know, a SASE uh, for the edge, uh, they've done acquisitions, the, the Cortex acquisition, uh, to really bring uh, automated you know, threat intelligence. Uh, they, they, have, they just bought CIDR security, yep. which is kind of the shift left uh, you know, code security developer, you know, uh, assistance if you will, that whole shift left, um, you know, protect right. Uh, and so I think a lot of opportunities to continue to, to acquire best of breed. I liked what Nikesh said, keep the founders on board you know, sell them on the mission, let them, you know, help with that integration and, and, and putting forth the, uh, the, the, the cultural aspects, yep. and then sort of integrate in. So, big opportunities there. You know, do they get into Endpoint and compete with Okta? I mean, I think Okta's probably the one sort of outlier. They want to be the consolidator of identity, mm -hmm. right? And they'll probably partner with Okta, just like Okta partners with CrowdStrike, you know, so, 
I think that's part of the challenge of being the consolidator. You're probably not going to be the consolidator for everything, but maybe someday you'll see some kind of mega, you know, merger yeah. of these companies. You know, CrowdStrike and Okta, or Palo Alto and Okta, yeah. or to take on Microsoft, which right. would be kind of cool to watch. Right. That would be. We have a great lineup, Dave. Today and tomorrow, full days, two full days of CUBE coverage. You mentioned Nirzuk, we already had the CEO on, founder and, and CTO. We've got the Chief Product Officer coming on next. We've got uh, Chief Transformation Officer of customers, partners. We're going to have great conversations and really understand how this organization is helping customers ultimately achieve their SecOps transformation, their digital transformation, and really move the needle forward to becoming secure data companies. So I'm looking forward to the next two days. Yeah, and Wendy Whitmore is coming on. She heads Unit 42, which is, you know, from what I could tell, it's pretty much the competitor to Mandiant, which Google just bought. We had Kevin Mandia on uh, uh, at September at, at the CrowdStrike event. So it, it, that's interesting. That's why I was poking Nikesh a little bit on yep. industry collaboration. You're yep. tight with Google. And then he had an interesting answer. He said, hey, you start sharing data, you don't know where it's going to go. Right. I think Snowflake could help with that problem, actually. Interesting. Yeah, a little uh, Snowflake and some of the announcements at reInvent with the data clean rooms yeah. and data yeah. sharing, you know, trusted data. That's one of the other things we didn't talk about is the real tension in between security and regulation. Yeah. So regu the regulators and public policy saying you can't move the data out of the country. Right. Um, and you have to prove to me that you have a chain of custody. Exactly. That when you say you deleted something, you have to show me that you delete, not only deleted the file, then the data, but also the metadata. That's a really hard problem. So, uh, to, to my point, something that Palo Alto might be able to solve. It might be. It'll be an interesting conversation with Unit 42. And yeah. like we said, we have a great lineup of guests today and tomorrow with you. So stick around. Lisa Martin and Dave Vellante are covering Palo Alto Network's Ignite 22 for you. We look forward to seeing you in our next segment. Stick around. Thank you.